Hello, today we're going to look at the details of the covalent bond, but first a quick recap on something we've seen previously. So you may remember this from a last video all about bonding. We looked at ionic bonding, covalent bonding and metallic bonding, and we looked at a brief overview of each kind of bond, each described as a strong bond. We are going to do a quick recap on the ionic bond, and then we will go on to look at the details of the covalent bond and how that works. Now remember, ionic bonding was between metal and non-metal, it involved production of oppositely charged ions. We had electrostatic force of attraction and importantly, it involved the transfer of electrons or involves transferring electrons. With our covalent bond, it's slightly different. It's between a non-metal and a non-metal and we're gonna look at the details of that now. But just remember, covalent bonding is different in that it involves the sharing of electrons and not the transferring of electrons. So we'll begin with our recap of ionic bonding. So you'll remember that we had a sodium ion, sodium atom, which transferred an electron. It then gained a full outer shell and it also gained a charge. We had our chlorine, which gained a negative charge and the sodium, which gained a positive charge. We now called those ions. We had the chloride ion and the sodium ion and they are able to attract. We summarized it like this, a plus charge and a minus charge. They attracted together and formed a strong electrostatic force of attraction, but it wasn't just two. There was lots of them joined together to form a giant ionic lattice. Okay, so that's a brief outline of that. You can see the details of that in the previous video. We want to spend a little bit of time looking at covalent bonding, which is, involves the sharing of electrons. So here we've got our example. It's two chlorine atoms which can join together they're both non-metals remember so they can join together and they don't actually transfer electrons they share electrons and the way they do that is they would have to come together to share one pair of electrons and that binds the two atoms together with a covalent bond so you can see the covalent bond in between the two atoms there so let's just add a couple of more details on to what we already know about covalent bonds uh, firstly, remember we said it was between non-metal and non-metal. Uh, we could have non-metal and non-metal as an element, so that's the example there is oxygen, or it could be a compound. It could be two atoms from different elements or more atoms from different elements. Okay, but the key thing is between non-metal and non-metal atoms. One more thing we need to know and remember is that there's three kind of types of chemical or three kinds of covalent structures we look at. The first one is what we call simple or small molecules. The second one is called let's just move that over a bit the second one is our giant covalent structures our giant covalent structures and examples of those would be diamond and silicon dioxide but we will have a separate video on that and we also have what we call polymers and polymers are long chain molecules and one of the ones we'll be studying is dna which is a long chain molecule but there are lots of others which we'll look at in a separate video Okay, so these are three different types of covalent structure we're going to look at. And in fact, for today's video, we're just going to focus on the small or simple molecules and have a look at the structures of the ones that we need to know. There's quite a few of them, but we'll go through them and you should be able to uh, recognize and or draw these different elements or compounds. So first we have a molecule of the element chlorine. We just did that one in our little animation there. And those two join together like so, sharing electrons. And you'll notice that then each atom has a full outer shell because of that shared pair. So there's eight on our left hand atom and eight on our right hand atom if we count the shared electrons. Okay, so we can um, see that both atoms gain a noble gas configuration of electrons. In other words, a full outermost shell. And that in this case results in an atom or a molecule in fact that has no charge on the atoms or on the molecule itself there's no charge like in the ionic bond and there's our covalent bond joining those two atoms together so we could draw the details of a covalent bond between two atoms of chlorine like that we tend to draw it in a much simpler way we tend to just draw the outermost shell to show the electrons in the outermost shell and we write a little cl in the middle to identify those atoms as chlorine so that makes it much easier to draw. And that's the first way in which we can show a molecule of chlorine with the covalent bond. A second way is to draw it like this. So again, we do the electrons, but this time we don't even draw the shells. And this works fine. We just need to make sure that we use dots and crosses to show where the electrons are for each of the different atoms. Remember, they're all electrons. 
they're just drawn differently to show where the electrons come from, but there are no differences between between the actual electrons themselves. Our third way of drawing it is by drawing a line between the two atoms like that, and that represents that line represents a single covalent bond, which also means we have one pair of electrons that are being shared between those two atoms. So that line tells us two bits of information. Okay, now there's a fourth way we might draw this as well, or you might be able to um, or you should be able to recognize and that's just drawing each atom as a ball and connecting them like so okay between having a connection between the two atoms and each one of those atoms is chlorine so chlorine is cl2 and these are the various ways we draw the molecule there are a few different ones we need to know we need to go through those for the remainder of the video so the next one is a molecule of the element hydrogen you'll remember hydrogen from the periodic table has one proton and one electron so there's our one electron in the outermost shell. Hydrogen exists as H2, and it bonds with a covalent bond like so. Remember, the first shell only carries a maximum of two electrons, so those two hydrogen atoms now have a full outer shell. There's our hydrogen, and if we were to draw it out in our other various ways, there's our second method without the shells, there's our single bond between the two hydrogen atoms, and again, we could draw it out like this, identifying each ball as a hydrogen atom. Okay, so the next one is a molecule of a compound. It's not an element anymore, it's a compound, but they are both two non-metals. We have hydrogen and chlorine. Because they're non-metals, they will form a covalent bond, and if you get in the hang of this, this is what we're going to get. And if we count up the electrons, there's two for the hydrogen, full outermost shell and then two four six eight for the chlorine and have a go at drawing the second method if you want here start off like that but if not it looks a little something like this the two atoms without the shells and then with our single bond joining the two atoms like so okay and again our fourth method would look a little something like this hydrogen joined to chlorine to make hydrogen chloride Okay, next we have ammonia. This is a molecule of the compound ammonia. So it's because we've got hydrogen and nitrogen, NH3. This is a compound. But again, it's a covalent molecule, a covalent structure, a small molecule. And again, quite straightforward. We've got five electrons on the outer shell of ammonia, of nitrogen, should I say. And so the hydrogen atoms join on like so. And again, eight electrons in the outermost shell of nitrogen, as we can see there, and all the hydrogens having a full outermost shell as well. There's our summarized version of that without the shells. And again, the simplest version there we can draw like that. And again, our fourth version, like so, NH3. The next one we need to know is a molecule of water. So this is H2O, and again, it's a compound, so it's a molecule of the compound water, hydrogen and oxygen present in water. And hopefully this is getting a bit simpler as we go now. So the water has, sorry, the oxygen now has a full outer shell, as does the hydrogen. And if we were to draw it out in our second method, it would look like that. Remember, you have to be able to draw and recognize all these different ways for drawing the compounds that we are looking at, and you need to be familiar with all of them. Here's our next one. This is methane. Methane is CH4, and again, it's a compound. And that would look like that for our atom diagram, and again, our second diagram, and third. Okay, and then the fourth diagram would look like that. Hopefully, we're getting the hang of things now. This one is slightly trickier. This is a molecule of the element oxygen. So here we have oxygen, and we have six electrons in the outer shell of oxygen. If how to draw the atoms is slightly confusing, you go back and look at the video on that. But we have a molecule of the atom oxygen, which is O2. And in fact, we don't share one pair of electrons. For oxygen, we share two pairs of electrons. And this would give a double bond. And it would also allow the outer shells to be full for each atom of oxygen. So the oxygen shares two pairs of electrons. And we would draw that out like so. And you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for each outer shell of oxygen. We draw this with a double bond, so we have to draw two lines between the letters O. And that shows we have a double bond. 
for oxygen. The last one, again, slightly tricky, but we have nitrogen, that is N2, and in this case, we share three pairs of electrons. So we have not a double bond between the two atoms of nitrogen, we actually have what's called a triple bond by sharing three pairs of electrons. So we'd have to rearrange, move our electrons around slightly, like so, so we can then show our triple bond. And again, if we show our second method, you can have a go yourself, but if not, we should be getting the hang of this. It looks a little something like this. There we go, three pairs of electrons shared. And finally, we show it as a triple bond by showing three lines between the two nitrogen atoms. There's our triple bond. Okay, so you need to know and remember all of those molecules. They're mentioned in the spec. So you need to be able to draw them from scratch if you had to, or if not, recognize them in a diagram. That's it for the video today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.